Oh, right. The poison. The poison for Cusco. The poison chosen specially to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. That poison? Yes, that poison. What's poppin', everyone? Saggy here. And we're, today we're back with another challenge. This time we have the poisonous slash venomous only pets. I'll be using those interchangeably, and I suppose I can just call them toxic pets only. So this was suggested by none other than Scoliopede Gamer. Scoliopede? Scolipede? It's a Pokemon. And I told them that I would try this challenge, but I didn't know if it was possible. Originally, I was just going to go off of what pets I immediately knew were toxic, so I could barely get past three or four wins. After some intense research, I learned a lot of new things about toxic animals that I'm going to share today. Feel free to look it up as well, as some are pretty shocking. And just a little disclaimer, the pets that I'll name have any amount of toxins in their body, whether it be blood, spit, etc. I had to do it this way or I'd be losing out on some very important units. I also don't do this hardcore as buy selling is very needed and our only true scaler is a tier 6. So that means the rules are that I can only end the turn with toxic pets. So I'll be going over every pet that I could use as opposed to just the new pets. So it'll be a bit easier to understand my thought process. So for tier 1 we have ant, frog, beetle, and moth. Moth was one that I didn't know had any toxins, so I'm very glad to have that. Tier 2 we have salamander, jellyfish, and spider. Both jelly and salamander are amazing to be able to use, but this is the reason we can't go hardcore as I need to buy sell a lot for salamander to work. Tier 3 we have blowfish, toad, wasp, and snail. So two things to note, I don't use any other fish because certain toxic fish are specifically named, like blowfish. And I forgot a lot that tail or that snail is toxic at all, so sometimes I don't keep him on the team when I definitely could have. Tier 4 we have caterpillar slash butterfly, mole, platypus, and eel. Yeah, we have some of the only toxic mammals here, and apparently eel blood is poisonous, the more you know. Mole and platypus might not seem like much, but having anything on the team is better than nothing. Tier 5, we have scorpion, lionfish, and shark. Some decent tier 5s, but I'm really looking at you, lionfish, which is happens to be another fish that is specifically toxic. And tier 6, we have octopus, snake, and komodo. Komodo is the only toxic scaler, which makes this very difficult. I count komodo as the only toxic scaler as well, um... And I mean that as like the end of turn, give stats to all pets. Of course, you could kind of think jellyfish is a scaler. You could kind of think that salamander is a scaler, but not really. So my game plan was to get some early frogs and try to stack up a big jellyfish or salamander so I could trade it onto something like eel, octopus, or blowfish. This is also nice as they can both get bigger again. Then have Caterpillar copy one of, one of my big units so then I have two. Sneak a scorpion or lionfish onto the team if I could, and hopefully one day reach the Komodo so I have some real scaling. But as we all know, life never gives you what you want, so you have to work with what you get. Also, my first 20, 20 runs or so were just so awful, I couldn't even make it past 4 wins. That's when I did more research to find out everything I needed. There could still be more, but this was fine enough. So this run right now was around the 50 or 60 attempt mark. Will I be able to beat this crazy challenge, or will I fall into the depths of despair? Well, you'll just have to find out. Wait, wait, before you skip to the end, uh, l let me tell you how, how big my feet are. I really need to stop playing pranks on my future self. Anyways, we're doing pretty well here in the game so far. Uh, much better than the games normally go, but I think that's the biggest reason is because I got the, the level 3 jellyfish. Um, jellyfish has been really popping off for us. Being able to swap those stats onto wasp actually worked out incredibly well. And then of course, lolly popping the wasp afterwards helped out immensely too. And, uh, all before we got to the last turn that wasp can, can actually, you know, do anything. So there, turn 11, we got the last, uh, buff that wasp will give to itself, the 12 attack. So, but 3647 is, is still fairly good. We even get a cow to buff it up uh, slightly more, but I think after that, it's pretty good. So I'm really glad that we got jellyfish, um, really glad that we got wasp. You know, I think wasp was fine enough. I still think eel or... Um, actually, I don't know if eel would have been better, now that I think about it. I don't think eel would have been better, actually. Uh, however, like octopus clearly would have been the, the best thing to swap the stats onto. 
um, getting a level two lionfish was actually huge. The, the biggest problem with this challenge is having no scaling. Um, now that the, we do have the lionfish on the team, we kind of can't put Komodo in. It's We've um, kind of trapped ourselves into a corner because we need lionfish to be closer to the back so its ability actually triggers. And then um, we're going to get Octo in. So that's very nice. Uh, yeah, our team relies too much on positioning, which means Komodo's kind of out of the question. So we just have to hope that we can win the next uh, four rounds pretty easy easily. But with our wasp and jellyfish being quite sizable, I thought it was doable. So we're going to continue on here. Thank God. Just lionfish helps out so much. It's honestly cracked, like absolutely insane. It's so many times you would be like, oh, yeah, well, I just lose. Well, it's like, nope, lionfish. So having the caterpillar there for a few turns was really nice. Not that we needed a level up, but any stats at all period any stats are like incredibly needed what well, we have no scaling we are getting no stats none whatsoever our our build is pure utility at this point uh we just got as many early stats as we could and now we are just trying to hold out until the very end so i actually position like this at first having the octo up front because thinking maybe oh i could uh break some melons or some peppers or something maybe uh kill an important unit at the start but you know it doesn't work as well as i wanted it to thankfully we still we still barely get by there octo actually helped that guy because he had an elephant blowfish build um so i think and especially since our octopus is so small you know only being a 10 10 that's basically nothing we could probably put him more towards the backs for uh cleanup purposes but I decide since I leveled them up, I'm going to have him there again. Um, I think Jellyfish could have easily been up at the front. Um, but I don't do that. I think the, the best one actually will be Wasp. So Wasp up at the front. Uh, having Snake get as many hits as possible. Thank God we tie there. We actually can lose one more. So we are kind of in the clear. Um... So I'm not too, too worried, and uh, I'll buy a chicken leg when I see it. Chicken leg is very strong. 3-3 uh, three, three in stats, you know, that, that doesn't sound very strong, but when you have no, no stats at all, it's pretty good. So Octo worked out pretty well there, uh, sniping the tiger. However, I still think it would have been fine uh, having the wasp up front, because, you know, Snake is going to snipe as well, so... And uh, I think this, I'm finally going to switch it around, uh, get it to where it needs to go. It is round, uh, or we are on nine wins, so this is actually looking pretty good. I just throw the garlic on there, hoping that maybe if they have a crocodile or something, it won't kill my lionfish. Just hoping, you know. So, can we beat this team? That is the question. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. Like and subscribe if you did for this amazingly hard challenge. Scoliopede Gamer, I hope you're watching. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.